Phantom Breaker Omnia is a 1 vs 1 2D anime fighter that's on its third rodeo around and I have a potentially quite unique perspective I think on this game from a western gaming audience perspective. This game is an expansion of Phantom Breaker Extra which came out in 2013, which in itself was an expansion on Phantom Breaker when it originally came out in 2011. Now, Phantom Breaker Extra, the 2013 version, came out in disc format on PlayStation 3. And I went through a spate in the mid-2010s of importing in Japanese-only disc-based PS3 games because I was so excited about the fact that the PS3 was region-free. So I own Phantom Breaker Extra. I've played it quite extensively, but and mashed my way through most of it, to be fair. But I at least can give that perspective of what has noticeably changed in this big step up in the nine years that have been since Extra to what we've got now with Omnia. My review will largely be around just the mechanics of the game, because now I understand it all because it's in English. <laughs> um, but hopefully that can give an added perspective as we go through the game. In Phantom Breaker Omnia, you have 20 characters to choose from. Those include everyone from Extra, including uh, the guest characters, which were Kirisu from Steins Gate and Rimi from Chaos Head. And there's two new characters that have been added to the roster to give them 20 in total. There's also a totally reimagined, remixed soundtrack for the game, but you can still flick back to the original on the fly quite happily. And there's now also dual language voiceover. So you've now got English voice acting alongside the Japanese and the story, which is absolutely huge and like its own mini visual novel, can also be translated just by word into uh, French, Italian, German, Spanish and simplified traditional Chinese. This is all great. Uh, and is really helpful, but the main big draws here are the rebalancing of the fighting and the additional fighting styles that help you kind of stack up the stats of each and every character in unique permutations, a little bit similar to how you can add on things in, say, like a kart racer to make your car either go faster or drift or turn in a slightly different way stats-wise. Each of the 20 characters has their own distinct fighting style and stance. So some of them will be a little bit more like we want to be close up and brawling so that we do short sharp hits for big combos. Some of them might be mid ranged attacks. Some of them might be a little bit more aerial happy and some of them might be more ranged based or projectile based depending on who it is that you've chosen. But when you then choose your character Previously in Phantom Breaker Extra, you could then choose from three different, uh, sorry, two different fighting styles, and that was a quick mode, which then prioritizes speed of your movements against the power of them, or you could go for hard mode, which means that you'll go slower, but you'll pack a punch, basically. And what you would do is this kind of lines up against the type of fighter that you've gone for, and you could have a super quick brawler, but you need to be in there in someone's face, chaining up the combo constantly to keep yourself in check. Or you could be someone who's ranged and projectile and just needs to land one or two big attacks to make a huge difference. But you need to know how to play those characters to land those punches and kicks. Otherwise, you're just going to get pummeled by someone bouncing around going very, very quickly. Now... With those two styles previously, it left a little bit of a gap in the middle, and this is where Omnia comes in. Omnia is now the third included fighting style, which kind of bridges the gap because it gives you a little bit of both speed and uh, power, but what it does is it then sacrifices the ability to be able to do some of your special abilities. And so it relies on you being a little bit more like playing around with the base moves to get a little bit of speed and a little bit of power. But it really bridges the gap nicely. So you have all of these different permutations of how each character plays. And it translates really, really well because you can pick one character and have them play three slightly different ways which effectively gives you 60 permutations of how to play Phantom Breaker Omnia. And I love this style. 
Now the way how moves are triggered once you've set all of like how you want something to play up is that you've got a heavy, medium and light attack for you to kind of chain up and play with and then a special ability button at the same time. Now you can then use the shoulder buttons and they're automatically mapped to press two of those together and I recommend playing around with those because it's very much around a couple of directional buttons and then normally a one or two button press can trigger off certain moves and get combos together. You'll see at the bottom of the screen there's uh, like an energy bar that's increasing on the, across the bottom. As soon as this hits 100% you can then press the special button and the heavy attack button to trigger some moves. But what type of moves trigger and at what percentage depends on which of those three fighting styles, quick, hard or omnia, that you've chosen. And so you can unleash some of your special attacks on quick and hard if when you reach 200, but you have to reach 400 in Omnia to be able to do something of a similar type of scale. So you're going to need to take more damage, you're going to also need to defend more, and you're going to need to basically hang in for the long haul to make sure that you get somewhere on Omnia because you'll get that percentage slightly quicker dealing with quick or hard fighting styles. In addition to all of this kind of high, uh, heavy, medium and light attack, you've also got the ability to block by pressing back on a control uh, when something's being hit, so that kind of is like an active block. But you've also got the ability on uh, a couple of the fighting stances to press forward and on the hard fighting stance you can absorb something as well, because it's as if you're like a meat shield with hard mode, so it gives you alternative ways to play. With the quick stance, you get the ability to double jump, which means that you can then try and double jump over the top of someone and then come down and land a quick combo the other side. Omnia doesn't give you either of these because you're stuck in the middle. <laughs> so again, it's all of these different fighting choices that you go for. The other thing that quick and hard also offer our emergency mode when you're low on HP and you can trigger that with some of your active energy down at the bottom of the screen and there's also like a, a critical rush mode as well where you can push out some specific maneuvers as you go along. It's really interesting to see how all of this comes together and it makes for quite an acrobatic and fluid uh, motion in how battles take place. I did feel on occasion that a couple of the characters that have got long projectiles can spam and cheese some of those moves and it makes it quite difficult for you to get towards them to uh, then get your moves in if you're one of those close-up brawler attack guys or girls. But with the blocking and especially if you're in a hard stance and then you can absorb and maybe push some of that back. it actually is overcomable so it's just understanding which stance you've gone for alongside the character and playing accordingly and i like the fact that nothing majorly feels like overpowered compared to anything else instead it almost feels like variations of rock paper scissors where if you're going to see one of your say if you're going up against another player and you see them go for a certain character of a certain stance you can then choose like what's their kryptonite version to try and go into battle knowing full well that actually probably they're going to be your kryptonite too so yeah really good fun and a good layer of strategy hiding underneath the gameplay here i love the graphics they've been definitely improved and smoothed out over time you can see that the time and effort's gone into that in terms of the actual modes in the game itself uh, alongside the really extensive story mode, you then have versus mode, one uh, player versus player, player versus computer, and you can actually watch computer versus computer as well, which I quite liked. There's also a records mode where you can dive in and see what you've done with each character as you go along. Strangely, inside here is where you find all of the special moves for some of the characters as well in some of like the game manuals. You can't actually access any of that in-game, so you have to do that through the main menu, and that felt like an odd omission to me. I also ran into a bug, admittedly only twice, but it was when a character ended up on the floor and became non-responsive and wouldn't get back up again. Now, I played this game for several hours. Um, it only happened twice, 
but it kind of made me go, Ugh. and what I had to do was to basically exit out of that match and then go back in again, and the game was perfectly fine. So I don't know quite what happened there in those two circumstances. But aside from that, the only other question mark that I have is on online play. Online wasn't available to me prior to launch, but it did let me get into some of the menus. So there was ranked and non-ranked versions of playing online and it let you enter into a room. Didn't say whether or not you could have multiple people in that room and you could kind of maneuver around or all of that, that kind of stuff. But it seemed quite simple and intuitive and you had your own like avatar and like a badge that you could uh, like pimp out on your bio so that you could then match up against people with either the same region, same latency, that kind of stuff. So it looked quite well put together without actually having to be able to play it so I can't offer any opinions on that. What I can say though is that outside of that there is a time attack, a score attack and a survival mode and those all have online leaderboards. So once you've then finished going through various different ladders through those different modes your score then gets uploaded to an online leaderboard where you can I'm assuming be able to see your position uh, through that once it's all turned back on again. It just kind of said your score's been posted and didn't show me anything afterwards. So in conclusion for me, Phantom Breaker Omnia is by far the best version of this game and I hope this stays as like the ultimate version because I think they've done a really good job with how this has all come together. It's pitched at a really interesting angle that casual fighter gamers, which I have to say I'm probably more part of than like the hardcore lot. I buy and play lots of fighter games, but I don't get heavily into the nuance of them all. It's pitched at a way that you can button mash and get away with it and enjoy yourself and pull off some really flashy moves because a lot of the flashy moves are actually quite simple to pull off. It's about understanding where you need to be standing and at what percentage of your energy bar at the bottom you need to have to pull off some of these moves. And I think that works really well. However, if you want to get really competitive with this, there's layers that you can peel off of this from defending and absorbing to breaking guards to triggering various like surge attacks. Everything is here for you to really get to grips with if you want to, but you don't have to feel like you need to to have a flashy, good, fun experience. So yeah, pleasantly pleasantly surprised. Two thumbs up from me and a marked step up from Phantom Breaker Extra. Britain Review will be over on higherplanegames.com tomorrow. Happy fighting. Hopefully, I'll see you out in the arenas. Bye -zy bye Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higherplanenetwork. Your support makes all the difference, and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.